Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat. This is the place where I talk all about cross stitch. Just before I jump into the vlog, I had a couple of things I wanted to say. So first of all, thank you to everyone who has subscribed, both old and new. Um, I really hope that you find something that you like here. I know that I've had a recent influx of subscribers, so hi to the new guys. Um, yeah, and welcome back to everyone else. I am, yeah, I'm very close to 500 subscribers now, which is, gives my little heart a fluttering. Um, when I hit 500, I will be obviously celebrating with you guys, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. I uh, just wanted to give, you know, give something back. And also I wanted to shout out two floss tubers who have been really giving me a lot of joy lately. So one is, as always, Stitching Dreamer. She has a lot more subscribers than I do. So I'm not really sure it counts as a shout out, um, but I really enjoy her content. She does a lot of silent stitch with me. So it's just the thread going through the fabric, um, but she does also talk in regular updates and she's doing some amazing projects. So Ching is currently working on this huge um, wall hanging that will take up your entire house. Um, but she's also working on a lot of dimensions kit. She's got some cooler design samplers in there. So I really enjoy watching her videos and seeing how she's doing. So go and check her out. And the other one is So Lele. So Lele Bells. Um, she just has a really calming presence. She's also from the UK. Uh, which is where I'm from and um, I just really enjoy watching her videos and she recently did a whip parade of her seven whips which obviously really suited me because it's a dimensions piece, a haid, a long dog sampler, <laughs> like we may as well have the same tastes at this point so go and give her a listen as well. Every one I mentioned should be linked down below so I hope you enjoy this video and I, I editing cat, We'll see you at the end for a quick haul um, and to show my progress on Animal Kingdom. Ta-ta for now. So I just got done filming my update for July. Uh, it is Sunday the 24th and my goal for this week or yeah I suppose this week is to finish this quarter so um, where the brick wall ends, that's where the heart, the page ends, or the quarter for this piece. Uh, it goes quite a bit further up from the chimneys with just blue fill in for the sky. So, let's see if I can manage it. So, this hasn't been the most <laughs> relaxing Sunday morning. Um, I cut off this from the side obviously we know how wide it will be now so this is three inches um, and i'm going to be cutting off this selvage here so this will be two and a half inches because the selvage is causing the scroll bars to have to warp um, and the tension here is really bad so ah <laughs> i don't like cutting this and um, my advice for any new stitches is to cut your fabric to size before you begin stitching because if you make a mistake, you can always order some more fabric. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was a bit worried that my Q-snap might not fit, might not have enough um, material here. But if it doesn't, we can always sew some more. Hopefully it'll be fine. Um, also, I don't normally use a Q-snap. I usually use a scroll frame. And I probably will go back to using a scroll frame if this fixes the tension issue. So, But yeah, wish me luck. I'm about to start chopping again. Now I just need to sew up the edges again with a zigzag stitch, watching um, Stitching Dreamer's new start while I do this to soothe my nerves. <laughs> this was really scary, but I'm glad it's done now. Uh, hopefully I'll get much better tension. So, yay, I didn't cut my stitching. <laughs> so I know that some people have a bit of nerves around cutting their fabric. Um, so I'm just going to tell you how I do it because I'm preparing now for Super Size Max Colour uh, Animal Kingdom. So I bob the stitch counts into one, two, three stitches fabric calculator here. And I give myself three inches because I really don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> and the count and how many threads I'm stitching over. And it will tell you how big the fabric should be. Ignore this bit 
focus on this bit. So, um, I might zoom in so I can't see the stitched area will be like this, so I can't confuse myself. Then, what I will do is we put the scissors away, we don't look at the scissors, we look at the size of the fabric. Ooh. So I know I bought a piece of fabric that was 140 by 100, and I know that my piece is 100 centimetres wide, so I know that this should be on the short side. So, we find the short side, and we mark it as the top with a fabric pen. Now, I use a magic pen, it means it disappears just by air. I won't show you a Madeira magic pen, um, but you can use whatever. Just remember to try it before uh, you use it, and make sure it disappears overnight or whatever. So, this is my huge piece of fabric. What I will now do is put it on the floor and find the short edge and then uh, start filming again. So here it is in all its glory. There's a selvage here. Selvage just means the bit of folded over plasticky Ada. My partner says it looks plasticky. I don't think it is. I think it's just very tightly woven fabric at the ends, which is where it comes off the machine. And I've just bobbed a little mark here that says TL for top left. And this is the short edge, which means it's our width. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the pattern and I'm going to get all of the pages um, from Pattern Keeper where all of the pages are. And I'm going to count along. So I'm going to measure three inches in here and three inches in here from not from the selvage. <laughs> Just going to clarify, don't measure from this bit. This bit we're going to chop off. So measure from one square down. And then um, we will have our top left corner <clears throat> of the piece. So if you remember, our fabric calculator said we needed a piece that was 96 centimetres or 32 inches wide. So again, I'm going to measure from here, 38 inches, a little bit above my, so this is the top left of my pattern, a little bit above that, and mark where I think that is. Um, and then, if I've got a little bit extra, I can move in maybe 10 stitches, we'll see. But I probably won't because this one's quite a close cut. Um, and then I will take an old needle from a kit and some just machine thread in red and I will mark off every page to make sure to double check that this is the width we want. I think that marking it off with thread takes a little bit of time, but I think it's the most important part because people don't do it and they get sad because they've cut off midway through a page. So as you can see, I rolled it up as I went along and also I occasionally wrote down the stitch counts um, because I was rolling up. But we have now got a little mark of every page. And now I've got to just do this this way too. Um, uh, but first, before I go this way, I will measure. I will count the number of squares and make sure that there are 100 squares um, between the start here and the end. Also, I know I marked top left now twice, but I'm actually going to move it down too as well because I can. Uh, which just gives us extra. Also realised I'm not going to cut off the selvage because this is at the top of the piece. You only cut off the selvage if it's at the side. The top's fine, so that's good. So we can ignore the selvage. Um, you don't need to do this part with thread and um, pen. If you don't want to be able to see the page lines, like the where your page will be when you're doing this, you don't need to do this at all. You can just go with the ink and it'll take a lot less time. But I am planning to stitch this in a bit of a weird way, um, where I will be starting on this page, I think. So I'd like to be able to see all of the pages, even when I start the piece, just so I know that I'm in, I'm in the right place. <sighs> but yeah, if you're a normal person, you could just mark it with ink. So we are done. This is the top, and this is the side. And this mark here is where I'm gonna chop, 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 chop. Wish me luck. Hi guys, it is Tuesday night, it's about 9 p.m. And I've been stitching on this for a couple hours. I didn't get much done yesterday, but between uh, today and yesterday, I did manage to get over 500 stitches. So mostly I worked on, hang on, I'll get my scissors so Luda doesn't shout. Uh, mostly I worked on the back stitching here in the tree. 
I finished off this yellow house. Obviously I finished off the sky and this made this little tree, did some greenhouse. And then I was, just came down here and started filling in stuff down here. <laughs> Mainly because I didn't want to move my hoop, to be honest. And we were getting kind of close. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm working over here. I might uh, come back up here and film in the green here so I can do the scaffolding. I don't think you call it that with plants, do you? Um, there's things that go here to support the growing vegetables. Um, there are some French knots to go here, but I didn't want to do them and then move the hoop and have the hoop move them or stretch them. So I'm just leaving those till last. And again, we're gonna be doing some, oh, some raised satin stitches on these apples. And again, I didn't want to do that until I was finished. Uh, but I'm loving the blues. I'm loving the colours. They're a bit odd. <laughs> I've never seen a wall be this grey. That's a lot of water. <laughs> and this house is really hard to see the windows. Sorry the camera keeps focusing on my hand. I'll try and stop that. Uh, but yeah, I really, really like it a lot. Um, so this is going to be some gourds, I think, here. Um, I'm just filling in the grass and then there will be, obviously another tray. Well, not obviously. I don't know why I keep saying obviously when things aren't obvious. Um, but this, from this line to about here, is a quarter done. I'm very excited. Um, also, this working on one project at a time until I, re till I achieve a goal is obviously working really well for me because I've managed to achieve my goal, both my goals this month. Um, but it's also, like, when I achieve my goal, I want to keep going. <laughs> it's like a springboard effect I want to keep stitching on this project so that's really cool it's a really interesting side effect um but yeah this is a lovely full coverage piece it's called the allotment and it's called world of it's from the magazine world of cross stitching and just sort of like slogging away that's how I'm calculating my stitches because it's not as simple as on a I am using pattern keeper but obviously there's back stitch which pattern keeper does not understand or no so i'm probably going to work on this for another maybe 200 stitches maybe even another 500 and then swap to something else i'm toying with <laughs> continuing with one of my heaven and earth designs but obviously i'm starting the amazing animal kingdom uh on the first on sunday so i might instead pick up either a dimensions kit or maybe a mirabilia or maybe pandemic we'll see how i feel because i'm guessing at that However I feel now will not be how I feel in a couple of days. Um, but I'm going to keep stitching on this while I still want to. Um, but I feel like I've done really good progress. So I'm very happy. You guys, look at this amazing stitchy kindness I received from Linda. It's Linda's 144 Hobbies. I talk about her all the time. Link in the description, of course. Wasn't this so sweet? She sent me two needle threaders and a little Halloween needle minder. Look at that, the jack-o'-lanterns, as you call them in America. She's just a pumpkin with a face on it. Uh, and a beautiful, beautiful Halloween chart. A uh, chart? It's a kit. And it has a little charm in it. She said that she knew how much I had enjoyed stitching the Mill Hill jumper and wanted to get me or give me this from her stash. So isn't that so lovely? It's so gorgeous. I don't know what this is, but it looks like a chalk pen for dressmaking, maybe? These are some curls, which I'm very excited to try out because I think I'm going to need them for Amazing Animal Kingdom. I'm not sure what these are. <laughs> I'm going to have to read them and find out. Um, oh, these might be refills for this. That would make sense. Look, because it's, it's on the picture. And then some amazing tea from England, which is where I'm from. Isn't this so sweet? I'm so overwhelmed. Thank you so much. I think this might have to be a new start, though, because <laughs> it was so lovely of you to give it to me. Also lovely of Linda to give it to me for everyone watching who isn't Linda. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to start this straight away. Just so nice. Wow. Thank you. It's Snag Navits. Look, I see it now. I thought it was a blue um, rubber thing, but it's actually, look, it's um, Snag Navits. It's the needles that you push through and it takes the loose threads with it. These are excellent. I love these. Thank you. I have not done very much stitching today. In my defense, we've been trying out a new game. We've been trying out Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I just got to level five and my eyes were like, yeah, we need to rest, we need to cross stitch or we need to stop and go to bed. We are tired, so I'm a little break. But I did um, all of this green and 
brown around here. It's a little bit more brown to go. And then there's going to be some gourds in here, I think. So I <laughs> should really just move the hoop at some point. But I feel like I've only got another about 100, 200 stitches in me today. Then I finished challenge three for enchanted stitches or um, magical stitching challenges. It's a Disney challenge group anyway. Um, and then I'm going to probably be putting this away and starting on my pumpkin from Linda. So, yeah. <laughs> but I will be disciplined and I will finish off the challenge on this one first. Oh, and probably the challenge on something else first before I actually start my pumpkin, despite wanting to start my pumpkin very badly. <clears throat> I don't think that will fit the prom somehow <laughs> for something that you've challenged yourself with and overcome. Uh, <laughs> I've challenged myself with not starting this for all of five minutes. Probably wouldn't make the cut. Um, but yes, I'm very excited to have a go at it. But first, this one. Then, something I've challenged myself with. Then, freedom for the weekend. And then, amazing animal kingdom. It is a lovely day here in Sweden. It did storm a bit earlier, but we're back to blue skies and white fluffy clouds. And I am stitching on my Slytherin Peds in the balcony. Uh, this was a tip from Stitching Becca, who said that she did her charcoal piece. So really dark, I think it was 32 count linen or something, like crazy small holes. This is 14 count Ada. Um, but she said she stitched hers on the balcony and it really helped her see the holes. So I decided to try it and she's right. I mean, you look at the holes that you can see here. I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> which helps the lily whiteness of my skin shines through the holes um but if you didn't want to wear shorts or if you had darker skin you could obviously put down a white towel or just position it so that the sun is behind it i guess um but yes i am really enjoying stitching on this although i don't like especially like when i stitch inside i do not like the way crosses look um but i'm excited to give this to my friends so I'm getting close to the bottom of the piece, I think. I think it's only another like 20 stitches down or something. Um, you can see that I've started some back stitch, but immediately gave that up, folded over the paper, so paper, fabric, so I don't have to see it. Um, and as you may remember, I've imported this chart into Pattern Keeper, even though it's not really a compatible chart, and input all of the blends and stuff. I love that Pattern Keeper lets you put blends in. And so yeah, it's really easy and fun stitch to do. Um, just worked on the part threads today because I didn't want to move my trolley out with all my packer organizer to the balcony or I'm lazy. <laughs> also, I know I'm going to go inside soon because my partner's just put on some bread. So we're about to eat Italian style, kind of like burgers, but they're sandwiches with pesto. It's very tasty. Anyway, uh, so stitching on the balcony, I'm stitching on like a sun recliner. Actually, there's, a, there's one right there. You see that? That's what I'm stitching on. Obviously not that one, um, but the problem is that my Lowry stand has to go a bit lower because I'm a bit lower and a bit closer to the ground than I normally am because I'm reclining-ish, but um, the arm's in the way. So, I mean, I have it, I've raised it up now because every time I flip it over, my phone hits the arm, so I can't like end my threats. So I'm not sure I'm really sold on this stitching outside thing. I think I just need to buy an arm extension for the Lowry so I can stitch on the sofa inside. But I am really loving how much I can see of the holes. It's really helping keeping my stitching neat. So thanks for the tip, Becca. And I'll just have to figure out the Lowry stand, I guess. I'm watching Frosty, of course. This is Teresa Little Stitcher. I nearly said Teresa Wentzler. Not quite the same. Um, but Teresa Little Stitcher's uh, Stitch With Me that she released. And, oh yeah, it's Thursday, um, July the 29th. So yeah, I'm not sure how much more stitching I'm going to get done today because we do have a raid in World of Warcraft. But I'm hoping to get at least 100 stitches, so fill in some more of this colour here, which is this colour. Not this colour. <laughs> So I somehow managed to stitch like 300 stitches along here. Uh, it was not easy. <laughs> I'm not a fan of black fabric, um, even when I'm stitching on the balcony. But we did it, we succeeded. It is only like, if you can see where the part threads are, this is where it sort of turns around. 
and I was about to put it away and like, oh, maybe I should start a new, new meal like it. Maybe I should work on this one, which I've already started over here. Those were the, the thoughts. And, um, but then I thought I should add some backstitch. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've printed off the chart and I'm going to highlight the backstitch that I've already done. Um, and then hopefully do some of this area's backstitch. Obviously not where it transitions into the other page, but we'll see if I can enjoy it <laughs> at all. Uh, there's a lot of backstitching in this pattern. Um, two different colours of backstitch and then the black has two different strands. So you can see here, two strands and one strand. And I haven't done any other colour yet. But I figured I'd do a strand or two and then I can move on with no guilt whatsoever onto other projects. Because I think if I don't move on soon, uh, if I stick with this until tomorrow, which is when I start my animal kingdom, um, then I will stop. Oh, I just won't cross stitch today. I'll just play video games, which, to be honest, sounds very appealing. So, yeah. We'll see. But at least two strands of... Uh, of um, two lengths of backstitch will go into this before I put it away. It is done. Uh, so I added back stitch here, all of this, this half of this triangle, added a bit more here and then all the way down here. In fact, I don't know if you can really see it, but all of this is back stitched. I think it shows up more on camera than it does in uh, real life. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty looking pretty good now. Um, I'm thinking that I might add all of this, sorry, all of the snake is scaled and all of the scales are back stitched. Um, plus all of this is back stitched, these guys are backstitched, I'm a lot more backstitched to guy. Um, I am thinking I'm on vacation from work from the 14th of August for two weeks. So I'm thinking I might spend some of that time to maybe once a day come and add like a length of black to backstitch. This was way more than a length of black. I did a length of two stranded and then I did about four lengths of one strand. Um, so yeah, so if I do a length or two of backstitching Daily, I should finish the first page of backstitching fairly quickly and then I can see. I mean, I know I just said literally like one video ago, I don't think I like working on one project for like a little bit at a time. But I think when I'm on holiday, it might be easier. And also it's backstitch and I'm not very good at backstitch emotionally. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. But it's starting to look good, so... Yeah, I think once I add the two-stranded backstitch along this uh, ribbon, it will look as good as on the top. Uh, all of these letters are backstitched with two strands, and then, yeah, like I said, all of these scales. So I've got a lot more to do on this page before I'm done, but at least it will look good when it's finally finished. <laughs> I hope. You guys, I have ripped out these stitches and this row of stitches so many times because I can't make my upper and lower legs the same direction as the rest of the piece you know what i mean i keep um because this is quite a big piece of perfect paper i hold it like this when i'm stitching up and down these rows i'm not going to do that anymore because seriously i have ripped like this much out <laughs> twice <laughs> but look i was good i actually did stitch on something i already had instead of starting something new I think if we weren't starting the Amazing Animal Kingdom tomorrow, then I would have started something new. But yeah, I'm going to restitch these stitches and I'm going to get angry and go get a cup of tea and play some video games instead. Because at least I don't have to redo my work every like two hours. It is 10 p.m. on Saturday, two hours until I can start Animal Kingdom. And Linda from 144 Hobbies has convinced me to do a test patch what coverage I'm going to be using. Uh, so I'm going to do three squares with a couple different colours, black and some others, and see how it works. Um, I'll let you know. This is 32 count linen, uh, even weave, sorry, and I'll be stitching one over one. So this was with one strand on black, so it wasn't enough. So I did one strand with all the colours except black, and then I went over the black an extra time to do two strands, which gives it a lot better coverage, but I think... I don't mind this. I think it photographs really well. It's kind of going for like a sea tree, blue, green tree effect. But then obviously I had to test the black. So anyway, um, I actually think this looks really good, but I don't know. <laughs> I might just do one strand 
full cross instead. Um, obviously, half cross would be a lot faster and it does look fine here on the camera. It's a bit more faded in real life, especially the brown, you can see the fabric through. But it will fluff, I guess, in the wash. Let's fluff it up a bit. I don't know. I can see the fabric, which isn't something that I like when I'm cross-stitching, to be honest. But it doesn't look too bad. I'll do another test square with full cross, and then we'll see. Oh, there, that's kind of what I can see in real life, what you can see now. Mm. No, I think it's going to be full cross. So one over one tent. Well, and two over one black tent. One over one full cross. Uh, obviously the colours are a lot more vibrant here, but the stitching feels really bulky and really hard to lay. Whereas here it was super easy and I was really having fun with it. I'm going to try much smaller <laughs> section of two over one tent here. Um, just so I have the full comparison, but I think this is definitely a no. This felt really hard to stitch. Hmm. I ran out of the, the teals. I ran out of the teals and the blues, so just brown, green, and black here. I do think you get a lot more coverage with the two strands. It was a little bulky, but not as bulky as this one was. Um, and if you want to see the back, obviously I didn't put any effort into keeping it neat. Um, uh, same for both of these, I used basket weave, which is half cross one way and then continental stitch back. Um, Yeah, I really wanted to try the one over 132 count, but I don't think the coverage will be enough. I don't know. I'll sleep on it, I guess. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. The only thing I can tell you is that this was not fun. This got a little bit hairy at one point, I think, uh, when I was doing the greens in here. And this was a dream to stitch. This was really easy. So I do not know. I do not know. Good morning, guys. It is Sunday, the 1st of August. I've just woken up, which is why my voice sounds a little bit weird. And we are about to start the amazing Animal Kingdom. I marked like 23 times where the page began because <laughs> I'm not starting in the top left corner. Um, I don't have my usual uh, band of pages up here, so I like, had to keep taking this off and double checking that it was the right page, but uh, this is where my phone will go with the pattern. Got my needle minders, got a bunch of needles. I am very excited, so let's get started. Look at it. Oops, let's turn off the pattern. Look at it go. You see this is a tree? Let me just grab my needle. So this is the tree trunk, this is the tree, isn't that so cool? And then this here, this brighter brown with the dots, this is a cattail. You can actually see it more if I pull it back, you see? Um, so you can probably see the coverage isn't great in the dark brown, but I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. And as you might remember from five minutes ago, I'm stitching this one over one tent, so we'll see. But once you're about here, it's really not that obvious at all, so. We'll see anyway, um, but up close it's very obvious. <laughs> it's a lot less obvious in the brighter colours, Oop, the brighter colours, because there's less contrast with the fabric, I think. But yes, I'm thrilled to bits with it, I'm loving stitching it, even though there are a lot of threads where there's like one stitch and then end it again. Um, I'm only parking where the colour is right next to where I've just stitched, and the first in a while in this 20 by 20 uh, 20 by x column <laughs> um so I'm, I'm what my plan is is to work my way down all the way to here the end of the second page in this row uh, so that i have all of summer and that's why i've got these big 11 by 17 q snaps um also someone asked on instagram how i manage my fabric and all I do is I have these rare earth magnets, really strong magnets. I have one on the top folded up. Um, here is the roll of fabric and then I have one 
the matching one on the bottom and I can, ooh, magic, move it around. Um, but that's really good because I can just shove my needle threader. And this is something that I made myself from a gift that my friend made me. So she made me this and I just made a matching elasticated holder for it. But yes, I, I'm really loving the thread organisation. Uh, you just pick out the colour. So let's say we wanted to stitch with 741 next. I can't do that one because I've already got it out. Let's say we want to do 782 next. So I look at my organisers and I know I've got 760 here. So then I can just go like maybe halfway there. What's this one? 792, it's a bit closer. What's this one? 780, a bit further away. 782, got it. I might add some more number um, splitters because I've obviously only got the five now. Um, and as I add more colours when I go to the next page, this side will get more full, which will actually help with the bags sitting nicely because right now they're obviously at an angle, whereas this side's quite full already. Um, and then these are the duplicates. So they don't need to be here. They're just here to keep the two lines separated because if the two lines mix, I would be lost completely. Uh, these are all my projects except for this one. I haven't made a magnet for this one yet. But anyway, I'm going to stitch because I've had a migraine pretty much all day. Got really bad at lunchtime and I had to stop working and go for a nap. Um, feeling a little bit better now, but I don't want to push it. So I'm not sure how long I'll stitch for, but we'll see. Guys, I have been stitching like a maniac. It is Wednesday. It is 11 p.m. For those of you who play WoW, I did get something good in the vault this week, but it was cuffs, so not that exciting. Um, for those of you who don't play World of Warcraft, look, I finished the second circle on my book and it really does look like gold work. It looks incredible, especially like when you're here, which is, I guess I'll touch it from here. Um, it just looks really good. Close up, the coverage isn't as good. No fabric. But from far away, amazing. Um, I've been stitching on this pretty much non-stop today. If you follow me on Instagram, you're seeing daily updates of this because I'm genuinely obsessed. So we have another gold band, like the ones around the title. Uh, then we have half of more of a circle, which is only takes us to the end of the next square. And then we have a zebra tail like, swishing in and obliterating everything. And that's only for one square, about 100 stitches. And then it's on a tree, which looks like confetti. <laughs> but I'm honestly really enjoying this, even though there is a lot of confetti, because it is the supersized max colours. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of uh, colour changes, and, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving the effect. Um, my box of floss is still working really well. I still haven't made a magnet for Amazing Animal Kingdom, so my focus is nothing. Um, yeah, I made a polymer clay, uh, <laughs> plant pot today, like a little tiny one, like a fridge, a fridge magnet, but it was really rubbish. So I didn't even put it in the oven. It's just sat in a cupboard waiting for me to, to make a few more attempts and <laughs> try again, try harder. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. I just, I don't know. I thought it would be a lot easier than it was. It was really hard. I couldn't even make the plant pot shape. It took me, I would say like 45 minutes. Um, and if you're wondering where all this free time came from, I finished work early because I started a little bit earlier and then forgot to have a lunch break because I got called into a meeting. So, yeah. Um, I still had lunch, but I had my lunch in the meeting. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, everything is going swell. I'm actually um, leaving my job on the 13th of this month and then I will have a week or two of unemployment and then I start my next assignment or, or contract or job. <laughs> don't know what to say. <laughs> um, so that's cool. Yeah. I'm just gonna let you stare at this for a while and think about my life choices. I need to brush my teeth and go to bed because like I said, it's very late um, and all I've done pretty much is cross stitch. I think I've got cross stitch's elbow. Maybe that's just tennis elbow. Crossed it's just shoulder. <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad. It used to be a lot worse um, when we first started working from home slash when I bumped my head and got a concussion. Uh, my neck pain was really bad. It's been a little bit bad this week. 
uh, probably because I'm, you know, spending my entire life cross stitching. I did over 700 half stitches today. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's not been too bad lately. And I did yoga. I should have filmed that. No, I shouldn't have filmed that. But I did it, which is the important part. And I followed a um, walkthrough with yoga with Adrian. So yeah, so I don't know. Things are doing really well today. Things are going very well today. Except for, <laughs> and the reason that I did yoga is because all of my devices, so the phone I'm filming on now, the phone I use for Pattern Keeper, my iPad, my headphones, <laughs> all of them died at the same time, which has never happened before. So usually, you know, if my iPad is needs a break, then I watch YouTube on my phone. Um, or if my phone needs a break, I'm usually watching on my, my iPad anyway. Uh, but they all decided to conk out at the same time, which I took as a sign for me to do something else. And probably because I was in a meeting all day, or at least the iPad. I use the iPad for, for work mostly, though it is my personal iPad. Oh, and I actually filmed a stitch with me for the first 200 stitches of this design. And then I looked at it and it was so bad. The camera had was a little bit higher than I usually use it. Um, because my partner had used the stand for something and it was filming the back of my head and it was like, it could see the stitching but it wasn't focused on the stitching, it was focused on my hair the entire time, so like the stitching quality is really bad so I'm going to do another stitch with me um, I'm not free tomorrow or the day after we have World of Warcraft gaming stuff um, but hopefully on Saturday I'll be able to film um, a little stitch with me because um, that's the end of this vlog. And so hopefully I'll also stitch on something else so you guys aren't totally bored by <laughs> my obsession with this one book. Um, but like I said, my goal is to finish this one book and tree. So this column of, 200 sti of 20 stitches all the way down to the end of the page. And to be honest, I think I will do that before the end of next week. At this rate, I mean, I've been stitching on this for four days now, um, and I'm, on, I'm I'm like half the way there, so <laughs> I might need new goals, or I can switch to another project, but you know when you, you feel like you just can't stop stitching on one piece, and you're just loving how fast it's coming? I don't really want to waste that feeling and, and force myself to stitch on something else, even though I know it's and not as exciting for you guys to watch me just, just stitch on one project, so we'll see. I'll try and find a good compromise. Um, I guess also I can talk about how I'm ending my threads. So you can see here that I am ending them uh, with just a little stitch and then cutting the edges off. Um, I'm doing this because I was using the one-stranded loop start method and I actually snapped a needle because it got stuck in the knot behind uh, when I was placing the next stitch. Um, so I'm not doing that anymore. Um, I think... Um, Linda, hi Linda, <laughs> from 144 Hobbies, she said that her back, she hasn't snapped a needle, but she said her back also gets but bulky when she's using the loop start method, the one strand loop start method, which, yeah, I now agree with, so <laughs> I'm just doing this, sewing over the edges, and then chopping them off, and you can see here, um, this is from this kind of, try and do it like a hundred down, um, and then when it gets to about 40 down, I swap to a new 100 down. And yeah, I'm just I'm just in love, honestly. I love the way it looks. It really does look like a book with a cheetah tail. Um, can't wait to come back up and get half the cheetah. And then when I go back down again, I think this is the full cheetah here. So when I come back down, I will have done this much. And I will be able to see a cheetah, another book, and a little bit more of my zebra. Or zebra, if you're from the US. But I think that was everything I wanted to... Oh no, one more thing, sorry. Uh, here, okay, here in the leopard, or cheetah, it's actually a cheetah. Uh, here I used two strands of black. But I thought it looked a bit like the void was staring at me, so I haven't done that anywhere else. Um, I transitioned to, I think maybe here. And then I transitioned to one strand. And yes, you can see the fabric a little bit through. Um, but it's no worse than 
in the brown. Um, I don't think, I know lots of people think black is thinner. I don't think it is. I think it's just the contrast with white. And like I said, once you get up here, you can barely see it. And, and once you're standing a good distance away, it's impossible. So hopefully the wash will fluff it a little bit and also nobody will be inspecting it with a magnifying glass. Because honestly, I'm really happy with this one strand approach, so I'm not going to change it. And now that really is it, I need to drink some water and brush my teeth and go to bed. But good night, guys, and I will see you whenever I see you, I guess. <laughs> when I find some time to stitch some more. Ah, I missed. You guys, you guys. So some of you will remember when I started kidding up this piece, I said I'm only going to buy the threads for one page. You remember that, right? And I remembered that too. I was thinking about how much of a smart choice that was. You will see here, this is the end of the page. And I was like, well, the colours kind of make sense to keep going down because it's a book. Is anyone else seeing the problem here? I don't have colours for this bit. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, so I've ordered them. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to skip those colours and hope it doesn't mess me up too much with the counting. Um, and it's probably going <laughs> to... I had a lot of time for me searching colours I don't have, but yay, cats and genius. <laughs> it's Friday. That means the weekend is nearly here. Um, actually, the weekend is here because it's Friday at 7pm. Um, uh, so today I did from the tail down and you will notice that there are no gaps, no colours missing. I was able to pilfer a length of 152 from Endless Orange Skies. And I actually took the whole skein of 471 from Endless Orange Skies because this project only needs one skein and Unicorn Valley of the Waterfalls only needs one skein too. So I just switched them. Um, I think my parcel of threads will arrive on Monday. Um, so I'm probably still going to end up with some missing colours. But let's keep our fingers crossed that my thievery will keep us in colours until it gets here. Um, but yes, as always, here is the distance view. I think it looks amazing. And yeah, just tree from now on. There's a bird somewhere here, but it's really just tree, which is a lot of confetti. So there's a lot of different shades of green here. Although it doesn't look like it. Um, it's a lot of colour changes. Uh, but yeah, it looks really good. I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> Try and stitch on something else, I promise. It probably won't happen, but I'll try. You guys, look at my hands. You see? Can you see it here? This little bump. And I've got another one here. A bug has bitten me. I've been bitten on it by a bug. My hands, my cross-stitching hands. Boo. So obviously I didn't actually manage to stitch anything other than Amazing Animal Kingdom since I started it. I think I might actually be in love. So this is where we got to. I took her off the Lowry stand for you. I could actually just do this. And then there's room for both of us in here. Um, as you can see this far back, good. I think I've shown you this about 20 times, I'm trying to dodge my tea. Um, still absolutely in love with this piece. Um, there is supposed to be a bluebird here, you can see. But I appear to have no blue threads. So hopefully they will come next week. Um, a shop called Brodery Korean usually has my back on last minute purchases. And they will be sending me um, these threads that I'm missing for page two as well. And then I'm sorted up to about here. So <laughs> take me a while to get there. Um, oh yeah, I'm covered in insect bites. We don't know why. Uh, we've closed all the windows now and we are washing the pillows in case somehow there is a mosquito living in my pillow. I don't think that's where it's coming from, but yeah, it's been unfun. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so sorry, I keep showing you my cheek. I'm gonna do this. Uh, yeah, I'm just loving the colors and I love the coverage. I mean, I don't love the coverage, but it looks great from here. And I, I just can't stop stitching on this, but I thought that's probably not very fun for you guys just to see me working on one heaven and earth designs when people like the rocking stitcher are rocking about 50. Uh, so I am going to pop a poll up here, here maybe, I don't know, yeah, here, hi, um, for you to choose which whip I focus on and whichever one wins at the end of next week, I will pick that one as my focus piece for 
the second week of my next vlog. All right, so let's do a quick whip braid of the five choices that you have to choose from in the poll so that you can make your decision. So first, of course, we have Amazing Animal Kingdom. This will be our Heaven and Earth designs for the poll. And I will pop a picture of what it's supposed to look like here as well. So if you just want to see more Heaven and Earth design progress, choose that one. Then for dimensions, we have Ocean Friends, which is a gold collection petite of some dolphins, a turtle and some waves. Oh no. And this. This is where I got up to last time I picked it up, which was, I think, only on its mania day. That might be true. It's a lot of my pieces, to be honest. Then for Mirabilia, we have a Royal Holiday. My eyebrows do not mean anything about whether I want to stitch a piece. I just really enjoy eyebrows. And this this is where we got up to. I think next time, see, I'm trying to see if I can pick up the critic. Next time I pick this up, I might actually know whereabouts I am on the piece. Then we have a magazine piece called Wash and Wear, which is to make a wash bag for the delicates and also for taking on holiday. This is where we got up to with this one. And finally, we have the Sweetheart Trees Plum Berry Sampler. I wanted to stitch six of these and make a cube. And then they discontinued the one I really liked with the grapes. So I'm not so sure now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this one. And finally, this is how far I got with this one. With a slub right down the middle. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but there is. So I finished the border with the colour changing floss and I'm now working on about 10 hundred yards of backstitch. And that is the choices that you have. So vote away. Finally, I have a bit of haul, of course. As you know, I got a big box. So how I do it is I batch all of my eBay purchases um, and then have them all sent to me all at once. But I had a couple of deliveries last week um, because I had my my bobbin sale came in which was great and also i ordered yeah i had a big box from ebay as well so from my bobbin i got this so this isn't actually cross stitching this is bead art um so i got three of these i got this bee i got this painting thing and i got this black umbrella so what's inside i'll show you because i have opened one of these before uh, is the pattern in English and Russian, also translated into English. And then there is the felt with the drawings where the beads go. And then of course, all of the beads. Um, so I'm kind of excited to try this out. I think it will be really fun. Um, and they make little brooches that you can wear out of the house. And I don't think they should take that much time. And I don't think they should take that much time, but uh, this would be the first time I'm ever doing any beading or anything, so. And I'll just show you them again. There's a black umbrella with rain on, a bee. I love it. This is the, it looks like the hardest one and it was the most expensive, so it's probably tracks. It's probably got more beads. And then this one, which I think is the first one I'll be doing. I just love them all. I think they're all fantastic. Then I had a bit of a lucky sprint. So I got this one in a, um, bird themed cross stitch kit uh, listing and it's a dimensions kit it's called goldfinch and lilacs and i just think it's really cute i think it shouldn't take too long um, it is on 14 count ada so it should be quite easy as well and a lot of the background is half stitch which apparently now i'm an expert at <laughs> and then i had some really lucky finds so this is pegasus and colt this is, um, has some blending filament and it has some opal, bee, uh, opal ribbon. And I believe you have to do a lot of, yeah, you do, you do make some roses as well with some more ribbon. So I, I'm really looking forward to working on this one, but it's probably not going to be the next petite I pick up because as we all know, I have a lot of them. Um, oh, you know <laughs> 
Uh, it's probably not going to be the next petite I pick up, but it's because I'm kind of scared of the opal ribbon, to be honest. But it's probably going to be one of them because I think it's so cute. And then finally, I got really lucky. Now, the seller rejected my offer on this one. This is Wave Runners by Dimensions, because as you know, I collect Dimensions Gold. I'm not sure I'll ever have enough time to stitch them all, but I can't tell you how much joy they bring. So I'll go on my soapbox after this. But this is Wave Runners. This is two horses along the shore. I'm trying to get, trying to get it in a good way. Oh, you know what? It is open. I could probably just pull it out. Maybe. The seller opened it and... Um, Obviously missed this bit here was a flap. They just cut straight through. Here we go. Much better. So this is Wave Runners by Dimensions. Um, I love this. I think it's so beautiful. I can't wait to stitch it. The end. Um, but the seller did originally um, reject my offer, but she was so sweet about it. She was. She said, you know, I'm really sorry. Like a lot of people have offered for this piece, and I don't want. I, you know, I want to, to, to let it go to auction and see what happens. And I won and I didn't pay, I think I paid about six pounds more than my offer. So I wasn't even that bothered. <laughs> and she seemed really nice. So when I stitch this, which will be soon, um, I'm, I've agreed to send her progress pics. So that's how nice she is. Some help, quick rant uh, coming up. So I saw on Reddit and I think on Facebook, a couple of people complaining about haul segments and saying like it's wasteful for people to have so many kits that they might not have time to stitch in their lifetime. And Rocking Stitcher talked about someone trying to shame her for starting a lot of haids as well. Um, two separate incidents, um, but along the same theme, I think. I obviously do not see the problem with having stash acquired be bigger than your life expectancy. It's called Sable. Um, I work hard for the kits that I achieve to buy. I'd never pay more than I would be willing to pay for a new Dimensions kit. Um, and sometimes I pay a lot less. <laughs> Gotten a few for very cheap. Um, and I'm very lucky to have the collection that I have. But it's also not like they're stuck in a box in the attic somewhere. I will go and go through my collection more regularly than I probably should admit on the internet. Um, I would say at least monthly, and it's often more often than that. If I'm having a bad day, I'll go and like look at all of the pretties in my collection, all of the shinies. So it's kind of like someone collecting antique plates, um, except that I get to stitch them eventually, I hope, one day. <laughs> I hope to live long enough to stitch them all. Um, but yeah, it's just the same as collecting frog miniatures or fish tanks people do that <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> in my other hobby of fish tanks um, I'm considered a bit of an outlier because I only have the one uh, aquarium or houses if you're very rich I guess uh, obviously I am not that rich and I am trying to tone down the eBay buying because I am trying to save up for my retirement in a few years <laughs> so I can stitch them um, but yeah I don't think that anyone should be judging people for how they choose to spend their money and how they choose to spend their time. Um, and I think if you are, that's a good opportunity to look at it as a learning experience and to see what a part of you judges people for having 60 whips or for having a big stash. Like, is it about you don't feel worthy of having that stash, so you project that onto other people, in which case, you know, you are worthy of spending your money on your hobby, however you like, if you have that money, you know, if you don't have debts. Um, and even then we could go into a very long rant about capitalistic society and how everybody deserves to have beautiful things to look at. Um, but yes, so I don't know. I don't know if that changes anything, but I enjoy my sash <laughs> unapologetically. I love having so many kits to choose from and collecting them. And, and yeah, I just love them. They, they bring me a lot of joy, just truly a lot of joy. So, soapbox aside, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you made it through to the end, even after the poll, thank you so much. If you voted in the poll, thank you even more, um, because that, you know, I would love to show you the things that you'd like to see. Um, and if you all voted for Amazing Animal Kingdom, then I guess you just get to see me work on Amazing Animal Kingdom, but I'm fairly sure that won't win. <laughs> 
I considered putting new start in the poll and then I knew that all of you would just click new start. So I didn't put that in there. I don't deserve a new start yet. I just had one, okay. It's this one. <laughs> I will put it in future polls. I quite like the idea of doing a poll every week, to be honest. But yes, thank you so much for hanging on to the end. If anyone has any recipes for mosquito bites or insect bites, uh, please do let me know. If anyone has any idea what this could be, other than insect bites, also let me know. Um, but it did just come on suddenly Thursday night. So it was there on Friday. I don't know what it could be. I hope you are all happily stitching away. I hope you've had a wonderful week or fortnight. Um, I'm going to try and publish a video next Saturday just of my unboxing of an Owl Forest embroidery kit. So if you're interested, check back here on Sunday next week. Otherwise, I will see you the week after with my next vlog. Otherwise, I will see you the week after with my next vlog. Happy stitching, stay safe, and see you later. Bye-bye for now.